It is upon us. Every Messiah, every religious ontology, every uh, manager of every booth that this exhibit is reflecting a distorted scintilla of the spiritual reality of the transcendental object at the end of time. Every one of us is a particularized and distorted image of this transcendental object into which we are being dissolved, into which global culture is being uh, dissolved. So, uh, <laughs> well, so what? <laughs> So we can cut into this cycle at any point. We can become aware of it, we can become part of it, we can deny it. There is no loss in the circuit. There is no blame. Becoming then, what psychedelic means is, it means claiming this dimension as your own. You know, Plato said time is the moving image of eternity. That moving image of eternity can be beheld in the silent darkness of the mind on five grams of psilocybin. And if you, if you think the universe is mundane, if you think there are no more frontiers to cross, no more adventures to be had, I'm telling you, you can turn your living room into the bridge of Magellan's ship on a long Saturday evening with five grams of psilocybin in silent darkness. We are living in the most empowering age in human history because all of the energy of the ancestors, not only the human ancestors, but our animal, our primate ancestors, all of that energy pours into, is focused into this moment. We are the transition generation. We have one foot in matter and one foot in hyperspace. And we can redeem the trust of thousands of years. All of the horror of history can be redeemed if we don't drop the ball. Every pogrom, every instance of racial, sexual, or minority persecution can be redeemed if we give the human adventure meaning. And we give it meaning by discovering the totality within ourselves and then exemplifying it for each other. And this dissolves boundaries, empowers the weak, uh, enlightens the strong, and brings hope to all. And it can only be done if we accept the gifts which nature has offered us. Thank you very, very much. The last thought I want to leave you with, which is a sort of a coincidentia positorum thought, because it will bum some and exalt others, is the one thing that I've learned from psychedelics that seems secure over all the decades and the, you know, embracing one idea, one ideology after another, the one thing that seems secure is a, a truth that is hard to hear in the context of a dominator culture with an obsession with the material world. And, and that truth is that nothing lasts. Nothing lasts. You know, your enemies will fade, your friends will fade, your fortune, your poverty, your disappointments, your dreams, everything is in the process of changing into something else. So your agony is about to be assuaged. On the other hand, your happiness is about to be destroyed. So the, the obligation that comes out of this realization is an obligation to the, the immediate moment, to this thing that I've been calling the felt moment of immediate experience. It isn't who you were or what you were or who you will be 
or what you will be. It's the felt moment of immediate experience. And this has been robbed from us by media and by our tendency to denigrate ourselves, to see the world in terms of the great ones, not here, whoever they are, Aristotle, Madonna, Jesus, whatever your particular bent is. Uh, the overcoming of neurosis, of unhappiness, of toxic lifestyles is uh, the felt presence of immediate experience in the body, in the moment. And, you know, psychedelics, sexuality, gastronomy, sport, dance, these are the things which put you in the felt presence of the moment. And that's really all you ever possess. Your memories are eroding away. The futures you anticipate will mostly not come to pass. And the real uh, richness is in the moment. And it's not necessarily some kind of be here now, feel good thing, because it doesn't always feel good, but it always feels. It is a domain of feeling. It's primary. Language is not primary. Ideology is not primary. The propagation of future and past vectors is not primary. What's primary is the felt presence of experience, and that is the source of love, and that is the source of community. If, so, I'm, if someone had never taken psychedelics and had no interest in it, and had come here because they thought this was the Traegering group, I think they would be truly alarmed and disturbed by what they hear, because we appear to be mad people, because we appear to be fully engaged with an unseen, invisible world, and we're calling it the cause of history, the purpose for the future, and the basis for everything going on between us. But uh, nobody said life was simple because every single person uh, who does this is seeing things no human eye has ever fallen upon. And uh, it is a realm of ideas and we do each bring back different souvenirs from that place. We are all equally qualified. We don't know who will spot the whale, but everyone should have their eye peeled because that's what we're doing. We're searching for an encounter with Leviathan. Nature is God. That was the informing vision of Moby Dick, and uh, it's a good one to carry as a metaphor into, this, into the psychedelic experience. There again was a perfect example of the male ego unable to release into the matrix of nature until it literally dragged them into the depths. Through the building of community, through the music and the dissolution of boundaries, through the use of these psychedelics, the shaman are showing how you create an archaic style culture after 5,000 years of human history. Because we can't abandon technology. We have six billion people on this uh, planet. But the shaman and the rave culture are showing us how we can take what was best in the society of 25,000 years ago and bring it into the center of our lives and live it again and create a community of caring, intelligent people who've got their heart connected to their head and their heart connected to their feet so that through dance, feeling, philosophy, sexuality, art, uh, we manifest the creativity that is going to be necessary for us to save ourselves. This is the key, you see. If the expansion of consciousness does not play a major role in the human future, what kind of future is it going to be? My goals are very modest. I'm very pleased that it chose to confide so concrete an idea in me. But if it had never chosen to do that, I still would die a happy man with the unspeakable experiences of beauty that it has shared with me. Because my psychedelic trips these days are not about the time wave. 
the time wave is pretty much a, a done a done deal. So I think it's like everything else in life. Intent is everything and impeccability means in that domain do not seek to use. Do not seek to use. It's a religious mystery and that doesn't mean it's an unsolved problem. It means a mystery and uh, life is only worth living as long as the mysteries continue to inform, transform, and inspire us. And the, the last thing I want to say, and then I'll leave you, is the truth can take care of itself. You don't have to approach the truth with eyes lowered and gaze averted on bended knee. That's how you approach bullshit. But the truth is so powerful that you can kick the tires, turn over the engine, check the odometer, and nobody is offended. Truth is real. It can stand the test. And that's why, you know, I went all over the world looking at various spiritual traditions. I don't feel it's putting them down to say that they were ineffective because they were all great aspirations. But the only real open doorway that I ever found uh, were the plans. This works. You know, in other spiritual disciplines, everybody wants to go faster. They want the Roshi to give them further empowerments. They want further uh, information, postures, secret teachings, so forth and so on. Once you reach the psychedelic experience, the accelerator is far less interesting than the location of the brakes. <laughs> That's what we're looking for. We're not trying to push. We all know how to push this so fast we can't stand it. the opposite side of the coin of ego. The central issue of our times is our inability to surrender to what we know is right. We have the ability to feed the hungry. We have the ability to educate our children, to clean up our environment, to eliminate sexism, to eliminate racism. The question is, can we change our minds fast enough? Not can we change our minds, but can we change them fast enough? A return to archaism with the lessons learned in history. That's where we were happy. The fall was a fall into a veil of tears, into a world of uh, limitation and pain and suffering and infectious disease and so forth and so on. It's a prodigal journey into a lower dimension that can now be ended by a collective cultural decision to commit to this Taoist, shamanistic, feminized, cybernetic, caring, aware, present kind of being. I mean, it's nothing more than what each of us is in our very best moments. But we have to extend those very best moments to fill whole lifetimes. That's interesting. 
the age thing. That's great. Old man McKinney. It must be approaching 2012 now. He's Ha, 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 ha.